Colorado River is, well, it's an awesome river. And the first thing we start hitting is some rapids, and you know, I almost fell out of the canoe. Didn't take us too long, but we already met some river folk, and they seem wild. How's it going, guys? We're meeting up with them tonight for a party here. Oh, yeah, Canada. <laughs> we saw this town Cisco on our maps. Cisco's a ghost town. There's nothing there. It was a little creepy. My name is Brian. And this is my best buddy. And his name is Brian too. Out of all the water in the world, only 1% is fresh water. And we're gonna explore all of it. And this time we're canoeing the Colorado River. All the way from Colorado down to the border of Mexico. And we're gonna use the same old canoe. Well, it's an awesome river. It's a little shallower than I expected. There's a lot of rocks to try and avoid, but that just makes it a lot more fun. So it's it's good class three rapids the whole way down, and we hear they get even bigger, so we'll see. You know, the whole trip out here, me and Brian were at each other's throats, even wrestled in a parking lot a little bit. But once we got on the river, it's just there's just something great about being on that river. And we both calmed down, just got back into our old routine and just enjoyed ourselves. The Colorado Ranch Country is, uh, well, it's, it's gotta be the greatest thing I've ever seen. I've never paddled through anything quite so beautiful. And, we're just in the upper Colorado. You know, I can't wait to see what happens further on in the Grand Canyon, everything to come. So far, it's just, it's been outstanding. This part of the country is just so beautiful. Like, you keep going through these super deep gorges and I mean, it's just, it's, it's surreal a bit to see these walls go up like hundreds of feet just in the air and you're alone in the river in the middle of it. It's, it's wild. So it's day one on the water, and the first thing we start hitting is some rapids. And you know, I really don't like to admit it, but maybe I'm a little bit rusty, and man, I almost fell out of the canoe. We got stuck a few times. Brian and I had to get out of the boat and free the canoe, and we brought a little, well, we brought enough water into the canoe, so maybe we'll put the skirt on from here on out, but. We did all right for our first time in this kind of uh, river situation, I guess.
So we decided to skip Gore Canyon because it was just way too hairy, but you know what? In the end, we still got to hit some pretty good rapids. I, as usual, wanted to like, you know, go spot them out, check out, you know, where we were going, what, what the best route was. But I'm going down there either way, with or without them. They're called class three, they look like class four. We'll see what happens. We met a river guide who told us that we should be able to go through Red Canyon and not have a problem, but he said, you know what, you might want to just get out, spot out the, uh, the rapids a little bit, make sure it's not going to be too shallow. It's not worried about our, uh, our skill level, more about hitting rocks, so we're going to go find out. Doesn't look too bad, but it looks really tight. Which uh, isn't a big deal for rafts, but for those of us that have 20 foot canoes, it might be a little bit difficult to maneuver. Let's go see some more. Let's not. Let's just go shoot it. Bry likes to be safe. We're just gonna shoot it blind. This is the biggest water wheel in Colorado, built in 1922. Beautiful old thing. I only know that it's the oldest water wheel in Colorado because I read it on the map, but uh, it sure sounds smart. Well, the reason that we're hitting so many rocks all the way down this river is because they had the worst winter they've had in, in 20 years in Colorado here. So the water level is extremely low. And that's why our beautiful water wheel here isn't turning. Hold up, this is awesome. Didn't take us too long, but we already met some river folk and they seem wild. Hey, ramming speed! How's it going, guys? We met the entire bar staff from Vail, Colorado, and uh, we're gonna go party with them afterwards. This should be a good night. What's your name, guys? So today's only. Yeah, who the hell are you? Brian and Brian. Yeah. Wow. Well, two, yeah, two Brian's. Wait, I'm sorry. Which one's who? <laughs> Wait. Which one's which? That's, That's actually the name of the show. It's called Paddling Brian's. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. The river folk we've met so far are your typical river folk. I mean, you know, uh, kind of nutty, crazy people, love a good time, party, paddles, you name it. We're meeting up with them tonight for a party here. Y'all need a cheers. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Good luck to Brian and Brian. Let's go. Canada, yeah. we're peeking up. <laughs> well, our big plan for today was to, to hit a campsite just outside of Bond, and hopefully, we're going to meet up with some of those river folk and have a good time. Looked on the map and uh, coming up, there's a, there's a class three rapid. Adams wants us to wear helmets, but why put plastic over cement? We had a great time last night with our pals there, the kayakers we met on the river. It's always hard to say goodbye, but uh, it's all part of the adventure. We gotta keep going. We really have to 
make up some time here because you know what even though the river is running pretty fast it still it winds a ton and the water level is really low so you know it's not the easiest thing to do so we, we just we got to get going and we got to make up some distance so far the Colorado River is uh, I think it's really shallow I expected a lot more water there's a lot of rocks we're constantly trying to slalom around everything the boat's getting smacked up like crazy The train tracks going down the side of the river are just amazing, you know, it's, a, it's amazing to think that, you know, 100 years ago or 200 years ago, these guys were able to carve this out all by hand without, uh, without very many machineries, just along these tiny gorges through everything, it's, it, it's unreal, I don't know how they did it. It's pretty awesome to be riding along the train tracks during the day. It's, it's awesome to see all the trains coming by and knowing that there's kind of like, it gives you that sense of security. But at night when you gotta camp, it sucks. We're on day two, it's going pretty good. We're hitting a lot of white water, but so far the boat's been upright and no holes yet. But uh, we're gonna delay ourselves again and go explore a cave we just went into. Probably like there's probably like a thousand bears in here. Are those dogs? Yeah, yeah dude, there's other feet. Yo, know, crazy. This is cool. This is insane. Is the lake catching any of this? Yeah. Catching all of it. It's a pretty cool little cave. You go right out through the other end. It's insane. We're right on the second day of paddling and we're seeing this already. But uh, time to go kill ourselves on some rapids. What we decided to do was pull over here because we looked on the map and uh, coming up there's a, there's a class three rapid. Um, not that we're that worried about the class three, but it says big drop over boulders. So uh, we're just uh, a little nervous that with the water being so shallow, we might go uh, we might go into the water so we're just gonna make sure everything's strapped in and uh, we're ready to go for a swim bilging the water out of the canoe has become a pretty uh, usual thing that we have to pull over and do because we're taking on so much water in these rapids so we have to pull over all the time to do this we went and we scoped out the rapids I usually don't like doing that Brian is very adamant that we do that these ones we figured we had to because actually coming up to them it's kind of like when you're coming up to a ski run and you can't see the bottom or the pitch and most people get scared i really love that feeling when you can't see the bottom and you know it's gonna be really steep yeah now that we scouted it i, I don't think it's gonna be that easy i mean <laughs> maybe if there was more water in the river but uh with all those rocks sticking out I'm a little worried i'm feeling 90 percent excited 10 percent scared or maybe it's 90 percent scared 10 percent excited <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> Adams wants us to wear helmets, but why put plastic over cement? Brian never likes to wear helmets, and uh, I I've been trying to convince him for a while, but uh, I was finally able to trick him by telling him I was just going to put a camera on it and we're going to shoot something. side and bring it all the way over to the left to avoid all the rocks. But once we got sucked in it, it was basically uh, the river had its way. It dragged us down and we pinballed off of everything until we got down to the bottom. Yeah, I thought we were going to flip for sure when we hit that rock. Because usually what happens in, in rapids is when you hit a rock, 
and you stop dead, the current starts pushing the tail out, and if you go down the rapid sideways, that's just asking for trouble. It's great to have done it, you know. Uh, a lot of times in my life, uh, Brian convinces me to do dumb things, and sadly enough, it seems to work out a lot, and I feel great, man. <laughs> like, I'm glad we shot those rapids. To clear through that section of rapids was was awesome. We'd kind of proved to ourselves that we could, we could hit a lot of the stuff on this river. I don't know about all of it, but we can hit a lot of it. We saw this town Cisco on our maps. Cisco's a ghost town. Nothing there, everything was abandoned. It looked like it was like straight out of a movie set. Like, like a tornado went through this place. It was a little creepy. Well, it feels great to get uh, to get Colorado the first date of the trip under our belt, and uh, you know we're we're really uh, really starting to move now. Coming into the state of Utah, it's changed a whole bunch. The river's gotten well in Colorado. It was really shallow. There was a lot of rocks. We were hitting rocks everywhere. Now there's more water flowing in. The river's wider. There's more water pushing, yet less obstacles to dodge. So that's a bonus. The scenery is fantastic. I mean, I can't say it's better than Colorado. They're both amazing, but it's these amazing red rock formations that uh, I think they were carved out like millions of years ago by a huge river or something. I'm not sure, but it, it's spectacular. It's really, it's incredible to see. It's, you know, it's breathtaking. It's, it's hard to believe it's real. We just entered into Utah and oh my God, it's unbelievable here. Like, I could never have imagined the scenery would be this beautiful, like this, you know, just so big and, and like intimidating almost. The, the canyon walls just like reach up to the sky. It's, it's beautiful. Could never, have, could never have imagined it being like this. We saw this town Cisco on our maps and we, it was time for a beer run. We were missing supplies. So we went into town only to find that there was no town. Cisco's a ghost town. There, there was nothing there. Everything was abandoned, about to fall down. It was a little creepy. It looked like it was like straight out of a movie set, like, like a tornado went through this place. I don't think they have cold beer here, buddy. Cisco's the armpit of Utah. It, um, it's crazy. It's, I don't know how many years ago it was a town. I mean, I don't think, it's hard to say because everything is, is in such shambles there. Like it's, I have no idea what happened. It must've been like an old coal town or mining town or something. But, uh, no, it was just, there was, there was nothing left of it. It's one of those towns where you kind of get that feeling, that eerie feeling that you hear in banjos in the background. 
The ling ding 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 ding. It was just really creepy, you know. Like to the left, there was like a broken down bus. Uh, to the right, there was a house that was about to fall over. I mean, there was just all kinds of weird things. Let's see if it starts. Get aboard, buddy. <laughs> Now, sure enough, Brian just decided to start breaking things. I was kind of upset and wanted to smash something, so I threw a brick through a window a couple times, actually. And you know Adams is pissed. He, he doesn't like that shit at all. <laughs> like, he wants to get out. He's afraid of hillbillies or whatever, cops, but who the hell's gonna be in Cisco? Like, there's, there's nobody there. There's nothing to worry about. I didn't think it was a good spot to be breaking things. It seems like the kind of place where that one crazy rancher that's still left in the town would come out and get angry about it. We head into these rapids, it didn't seem all that bad, but sure enough when we got into the middle of it, they were a lot bigger than they looked from, uh, from far away. You know, at one point we go over one roller and I just see the big dip and, and I go swimming, like right, right, into the, right, right into the wave and just got completely soaked. The thrill of riding through the rapids is, like you go in with one plan, you have it all planned out, you can see it, you know, like you should all stand up in the boat before we get to the edge of the rapids and take a look at what I want to do. But the thrill of it is that that current's going to pretty well pull you and drag you to wherever it goes. And the whole plan going down is just hold the boat straight and try not to tip. That's, that's how we shoot them. <laughs> We're not pro, eh? <laughs> 